Welcome to the July vlog of the AWC Provider Alliance. I'm Damien Kay and I work collaboratively um, across Bradford District and Craven with two provider alliances and this includes the Airedale, Wharfdale and Craven Provider Alliance. For our July session, um, we decided we were going to look at the long -term, NHS long-term plan and the priorities of the three communities. And specifically, we wanted to focus on our current and future workforce and how we could improve the health and care of the local populations by working better together. We reflected on the long-term plan um, and its priorities and what it meant within the three communities and what we might want to do locally within AWC. We specifically thought about what's already going on across our system. We have some very robust programmes across Bradford District and Craven that will deliver something more within the sort of medium and long term. And we really wanted to have a go at looking about short term and some quick wins to improve our sort of current and future workforce and some of the challenges that we're facing collectively as health and care providers. We had some experts in the room from the Integrated Workforce Programme Board and the One Workforce Programme and they were able to share with us the detail of the work that they are carrying on on behalf of our local place and we just tried to align that with the AWC local system and our priorities and the things that we want to do together. The Integrated Workforce Programme Board is looking at um, growing our own workforce and it's getting involved in things such as apprenticeship schemes and having ambassadors so they can promote working in health and care and we've had some really good success results on the back of that and attending careers events and getting more young people in the sort of 14 to 16 age group really interested in the breadth and the scope and type of roles that health and care offers, not just the more traditional sort of medicine and nursing roles, things like OT, physios, social workers, etc. We're also looking at developing our workforce together and opportunities this might include, such as opening up training courses that one organisation might host. And what we're trying to do is make sure that we um, have the best opportunities to get health and care to learn together, to share together and to develop together. We're also looking at creating conditions to retain talent. We do know we've got quite high um, rates of people leaving the health and care sector. Um, so we're looking at being able to offer some sort of um, shared reward and benefit systems across health and care. Things like NHS discounts are available to health staff. But if you work in a care home or in the home care sector, you don't have access to those benefits. Why is that? Can we do something to change that? We also heard from the One Workforce Programme, which is part of the Health and Social Care Economic Partnership, who have a two-year programme backed up by 1.1 million investment, and they've got three priority areas. One includes inclusive health and care community um, recruitment, and we've got some early results on that, but they've got a longer term target by February 2020 through about 1,200 contacts to have at least 1,000 people in work. Small steps, they've only been going since March, but they've already made some inroads into that, which is fabulous news. Additionally, they're looking to have a blueprint uh, for a One Workforce Academy across health and social care, acknowledging ambitious challenge, but they're working that through, and the blueprint should be ready um, in 2020. The final thing they're working on is to have a uh, health and care uh, connected uh, sort of recruitment platform and this uh, will have a, a web presence, not really sure how detailed that will be but there is a commitment to do something on that uh, by December 2019 so watch out for that. Having heard some of the more medium to sh uh, longer term work, we spent the rest of the time actually looking at what's important within the AWC locality. We talked about develop, um, development and talent management. We talked about recruitment and different ways of recruiting. And we also talked about reducing red tape to make things easier for the workforce. So that actually if we're gonna work in an integrated way, we can share roles, we can rotate roles, we can move roles across the system much easier. At the moment, that's actually quite hard to do. Um, we talked and, and we've got a bit of an emerging plan, we had some specific actions, things like taking out to the community those jobs that are proving hard to fill, some of them are part time and it may be that people within the communities who want to return to work want a different work life balance, different model of working, so we're going to have a try to take those things out and say are there roles that the local community could fill um, that, that previously um, the local community wouldn't have accessed or been able to do, particularly admin and non-clinical roles probably in the first instance. 
We had some sectors missing from our conversation um, yesterday and what we'd really like to do is engage with them further at our August meeting. It was predominantly health partners in the room and we'd really like to engage with um, the social care sectors and care home, home care sectors and our out of hours providers that, that also routinely join us. During September we'll work out a plan for enacting this. We want to be able to do some short term actions and make sure that we take this forward together. We'd also like to engage with people who are working in our, in our health and care sector at the moment and our opportunities for doing that are through Twitter. You could tweet us at Alliance AWC. We look forward to hearing from you and taking forward this exciting work together. Mm -hmm.